What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Now, I'm not making no promises to y'all, but now that the playoffs is here, this recap thing is about to happen way more often than it was like in game 42 of the regular season because now in a lot of situations, it's win or go home. These games matter. So I'm not promising you daily, but here we are. This is where it started. This is where the recap began in the playoffs, and we're doing it again. A couple housekeeping things we got to talk about before we get into today's playing games. Um, this, the call game recap, is now available on the podcast feed. So if you download or you're subscribed to the Called Game Podcast, which you should be, you legitimately should already have it on your phone. Even if even if you're a guy that watches YouTube videos, go go ahead and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Help the algorithm a little bit. Um, I've been getting a lot of people telling me they want to listen to the recaps on the way to work the next morning, on the way to class, and now you can download them um, right after they're up on YouTube. So it's a little bit bittersweet because I don't really want to divvy up my audience. But I'm a man of the people, and if the people need it on platforms, I got it on multiple platforms, all right? Leave a like, subscribe. Um, Called Game with Thaddeus Young is tomorrow evening, right before the Western Conference play-in. So I want to see y'all all in the stream team and, uh, you know, showing some love for me and my boy Thadjik Johnson, all right? We were on cloud nine. We recorded that episode right after the trade deadline. Little did we know the Bulls would not make that push. The Bulls should have been playing tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but instead they weren't. Before this game started, I was con- I, I was convinced with the with the Karis LeVert news coming out right this morning, I was so convinced that the Indiana Pacers were not going to win this game, right? And you know what? I'm never a guy that's going to front my move. Watch the last video of the recap. Watch my podcast. I've been keeping it a buck, right? Typically, I don't root against teams. In this game, I was rooting against the Indiana Pacers. Now, a lot of Pacers fans took that to heart. Kenny, oh, my God. They even clipped it and put it on Instagram. It was no hard feelings between me and the organization or me and the fans. I just think it's a little bit more fun to watch the Charlotte Hornets long term. That was that was simple. People took it real personal. But listen, the Pacers proved me wrong. It was fun watching them dominate. Very fun. I've, uh, but I've always I even put in the caveat in this, but people clip this out that I'm a big fan of watching Sabonis and when Sabonis is doing Sabonis things. And today he didn't even have the game that you would want him to have in order for you to advance in a win now game. It was the other. It was the surrounding pieces. I am so happy that this man Doug McDermott has a home. Now, I don't know if he'll be here long term, but he looks like a pacer, right? He plays like what you would want from a player on the Indiana Pacers. And when I saw him, they did a a baseline out of bounds play where he got it back and got like a layup. I was like, yeah, they're going to win this game. At that point, he had like, he is, I think that was the first two he scored. He had two open threes, and I'm like, this game is 100% over. They look like they wanted it more. And if you go back and watch the episode I dropped yesterday, I said that the Pacers would probably win this game because of their experience. And they look like they knew what it was like to be in a game seven scenario. Because they do. You know, they, uh, because they do. I'm just going to say they do. Has a bonus been in the game seven? Off the top of my head, I don't really know. But they've been in these these high-intensity moments in their NBA careers, a lot of these players. Malcolm Brogdon on his Bucks run. Justin Holiday been on a 1,000 playoff teams. Like, these are players that have had moments in the playoffs. That's exactly what I said last episode. But I like the idea of seeing LaMelo in a seven-game series. But, I, listen, if they're going to play like this, I'm glad that the Pacers won it. You know what I'm saying? Do you, the guy that surprised me the most. Now again, I do watch a lot of basketball, so I'm not gonna act. I'm not gonna be a casual here. But Osei Brissett, right? Because the last month of the season, every single year, we see players have this crazy month. Players that aren't really. I don't want to say NBA players because a lot of NBA be NBA players, but players put up ridiculously great stats in the last month of the season because some teams have decided to fold it in and this guy has opportunity. And that was kind of the way I was thinking about O'Shea for a lot of his games because he, he's he been hooping for them. You know, if you've been watching the Pacers over the last month, he has been actually hooping for him. He had a, like a 30-point game. He's been super efficient with it. So I was always curious, or I'm curious now, of how much of what we're seeing from Brissett is legitimately him because that changes the little path for the Indiana Pacers a little bit long term he's a young player he just spent one season with the Toronto Raptors and I say one season because he played like what 10 games at the max he played he played one season in the Indiana Pacers or with the um the Toronto Raptors and now he's here and in the win now game this man looked like he might have been the second best player on the third best player on the entire court behind Doug McDermott <laughs> behind DeMonte Sabonis and then it was Brissett so I, I'm super excited I love to see like no name, you know, second round picks, late first round picks, make a name for themselves. And this is the biggest place to do it. Because though I feel like a lot of people aren't invested in the Pacers and a lot of people aren't invested in the Hornets, I feel like a lot of people are invested in the play in. And for this to be the first game they saw to see this guy dominating the way he did was great. 
but it was also bad for like the casual fan to look at this and be like the play in bro it don't matter they just did 30 points but then game two started shout out to the pacers we're gonna talk about the matchup against the loser of game two because this one let let up um lived up to the hype a little bit more a, a lot more because about a half time it was a very close game I'm on I'm on spaces with the homies. We got 1,500 people in spaces. That's insane. Talking about the first half of this game. And I was like, yeah, this is about to be one that's going to go down to the wire. Nope. Jason Tatum, Kemba Walker, beginning the third quarter. I think it was a 24-6 to six run to start the third quarter. Ridiculous. And I'm not going I'm not going to bury the lead. A lot of this is because Bradley Beal, again, second game in a row, he just does not look healthy. He goes back to the locker room. Three minutes in, he's already grabbing at his hamstring. And I was listening to No Dunk. Shout out to my homies over in No Dunks. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. They, they post quality content every single day. I think it was Trey Kirby that brought this point that I didn't even really think about. The previous games between the Washington Wizards and the Boston Celtics, they had Bradley Beal as a primary defender on Jason Tatum. And I think Jason Tatum had a 40. He had a 30. Like, he is always giving them buckets because he's too fast for Rui Hachimura, but he's also too big for Bradley Beal, and then you throw in the hamstring on Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum is licking his fingers because this is the environment JT was bred for, bro. 50? 50 and a win now. I mean, I guess this game is not win or go home. It's not. But it's, like, super important that you get this first game because game number two, you don't, you don't want to go into game number two. So for him to come out and drop 50 when they're, like, decimated is amazing. And then they end up losing Robert Williams, too. Marcus Smart goes down. Like they, they got some bad luck right now. But they pull out this this game. I'm very curious to see what happens to Robert Williams. Because I mean, they're going against the Brooklyn Nets next series. I think everybody in the world is picking Brooklyn to win that series. Um, but if the the Boston Celtics want to be competitive, I think Robert Williams can help that. But this is also, as far as them not having a center, it probably works out well against the the Nets because the Nets don't have a center that they trust too much either. But it's still the Nets, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm thinking Nets and Nets and five maybe N Nets and six if I'm being curious or I'm being uh, courteous. Nets and five makes a lot of sense. But for Jason Tatum to come out and drop a convincing fifty, like 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 hot as can be, and on top of that, you also get Kimball Walker looking like the Kimball Walker they paid all that money for. It was great. And at the end of the day, of course, it's Jason Tatum and Kimball Walker's play that gets them the victory. But also on top of this, what also got them that win was the fact that Brad Stevens was not afraid to not play the bums. And I say bums very lightly. I mean, like, the players that you don't trust in the playoff series, he didn't play those dudes until the game was already at 15. It was already at it was already at 20. And those are the type of things you need to do for a one-game elimination type thing. And th th he saw an opportunity. Hey, listen, if, if we win this game, we got the next couple days off, JT could get a little bit of rest. We're going to run JT. We're going to run Evan Fournier. We're going to run Kemba. And then you're up by 20 at one point. Oh, now we can bring in Romeo Langford to, you know, play the last half or the last quarter in the beginning of the third or the end of the third. We can bring in the victory cigar, Luke Hornet. Shout out to Luke Hornet, man. Love to see him successful. Um, and I use success very lightly. But what a what a game from Jason Tatum. An all-time performance that might get lost in the shuffle. Because I saw a tweet right after this game, like, this don't officially count as a regular season game. It doesn't officially count as a postseason game or like a playoff game. So where does these statistics live? Where, where, like, is there going to be another tab that says play in? Because last year we had to play in. John Moran dropped like 35-40. And I don't know where I can find that a basketball reference. So this 50 might get lost in oblivion. But if it was a playoff game, ridiculous, ridiculous. We have to talk about Russell Westbrook's performance. I just noticed that, that that's that's been in the way the entire nine minutes. We do one take of these things. Russell Westbrook's performance, not great. You can look at the box score and say, oh, yeah, 20. He had 14. He had five. He only turned the ball over four times. It was dreadful. The Washington Wizards lose this because Bradley Bill's hamstring and Russell Westbrook didn't do enough to put them over the hump. And you know what? This is just one of those games, man. You, you give and take with Russell Westbrook, right? He will have seven games of greatness and then he'll have one stinker. It just so happened that this one stinker is the most important game of the season for them. Um, and now they have to go against Indiana. And I think this matchup is super interesting because I believe that the Indiana Pacers have the Indiana Pacers have defenders that they can throw at Bradley and Russell Westbrook. That look that little man TJ McConnell's gonna get on some skin. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you run TJ on on Raw NATO who's starting or whatever, but they have defenders similar to like the Boston Celtics has defenders. You know what I'm saying? 
So it should be a very interesting one. This whole last game between Pacers and Wizards really depends on what this man Bradley Beal's hamstring is looking like. I don't know if we have a scheduled date. Like, is this? do they play on Thursday? Do they play on Friday? I don't know. But if this man can't get his hamstring right, and hamstring is one of those nagging injuries. My boy Mike suffered a hamstring injury his worst, our sophomore year. He was starting, suffered a hamstring injury three games to the season and lost his starting job. And was never the same until we're 24. Now he might be a little bit the from, from from sophomore year. That's how crazy hamstring injuries can be. But it also can be a one-week injury. So it's like this big old timetable that can be different. It's just the worst timing for Bradley because everybody knows Bradley Beal is one of the most elite scorers we have in the game today. But if he can't run, he can't be as explosive, he can't cut the way he normally does, he's going to have a 10 for 15 or 25 game. He's going to just drop 22 when he averages 30. Um, I really love this second game. Tomorrow should be better. It should be. We, I don't know. It may not live up to the hype, but tomorrow should be better, and we'll see. Um, is there any other things I want to talk about in, in this one? Um, the Charlotte Hornets disappointed me. I, I just had a feeling that they were going to come out and look young, and they did that to the, whoa, to the max. They played like they had practice in the morning. <laughs> they don't. Uh, you, you, you catch a flight home, and that's it. But they play like, yeah, we'll get them next time. They're, no, bro. It was no next time. So it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Depending on who you ask, I guess. Um, but if this is the Pacers seating that we're getting for the next game, shout out to them, bro. Shout out to them, bro. Uh, Sabonis didn't even have a good game, and they they won by 30. That's insane. I mean, he had a good game. He didn't have a good scoring game. I'm sorry. He didn't have a good scoring game, and they won by 30. Insanity. Insanity. Uh, let me know what you think about this next play-in game for the final eight seed. Who do you have? Do you have the beat-up watch the Wizards? I guess technically the beat up um, Indiana Pacers too, but the beat up for the Indiana Pacers is different than the beat up for the Washington Wizards because the beat up for the Washington Wizards is like trying to play through it, and the Pacers is like, hey, next man up, O'Shea, let's go, bro. We ain't got Miles, we ain't got this guy, O'Shea, what's up? <sighs> Sumner's, wow, quality player, I guess. Let me know what you think. Leave a like, go listen to a podcast platforms, and I'll I'll see y'all, see y'all tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>